Hello, Internet, and welcome to my live reaction for Yomi no Sugai, Chapter 4. Uh, when we last left our heroes, uh, Yuru met up with Hana. Um, um, Dara's sort of... I think she's also a Sugai, and they might be, like, part of a Sugai pair. It's kind of hard to tell how exactly they're related. But she's an ally to, uh, to Dara and to that whole faction, and she owns a minivan, which is super useful, because now they can, like, get away, and we have some fun gags as, like, uh, Yuru and the Sayu twins don't have any idea what the fuck a minivan is. Mm. But anyway, uh, Yuru gets a bit of, a, of an update as to what exactly is going on in the world, uh, but what modernity is. And also, uh, left and right tell him uh, that his parents ran away with Asa 10 years ago. That initially they sort of like from their from their perch watched Asa come by less and less, leading to them thinking that she was dead. And then one day Yuru and Asa's parents dashed out of the village with Asa in tow. Meaning maybe Asa knows where Yuru's parents are. Yuru never really like thought about his parents that much, but now he's kind of interested. Um, and then meanwhile... Um, there's this, like, sort of gag going on with Dara and Hana where they're going to, like, fake get married to, like, avoid suspicion so that uh, the Kagimori family, if we find out the organization that, um, that Asa and Gab work for is called, they won't, be able, they won't, like, be able to easily find the group if, if they have this, like, fake life. Meanwhile, we spend a little bit of time learning more about the Kagimoris. Uh, we get this whole segment on the mountaintop sort of solidifying how much they all care for each other. It's really sort of sweet... Not very villainous. There's a sense of, like, they're not really as bad as maybe we've been let out to believe. Which is a thought I've kind of had in the back of my mind since the pilot. Um, mm. Sorry, my throat is just oddly sore tonight. Anyway, uh, later on, we see Gene, the sort of, like, sub-commander of the Kagemoris. Uh, and his sugai, this anglerfish, with a woman acting as the light, uh, eats this... This, like, would-be murderer. Uh, and also threatens this woman who just, like, happens to pass by. It, it's a real neat sequence. But that's what we leave off on. So with that said, let's dive right on into Chapter 4. With a little opening blurb reminding us that this is, this is Yuru's first convenience store meal. Uh, and Dara goes on. Dara just sort of says, Neither Hanachan nor I know much of the particulars. And Hana tells Yuru, My family's lived in the, in the lower lands for generations. I merely inherited this job. That's an interesting thing, because I thought she was a Sioux guy. That was what, what Dara called her back in Chapter 3. Mm. But she's in, she inherited the job? What does that mean? I just have no idea. Uh, Dara then goes on, Granny Yama said not to tell anyone outside the family about Higashimura, and kept saying not to ever give up Asa and Yuru to other people. Well, that didn't go over so well. I provide supp supplies and pass messages. And Hana tells him, I do chores of all sorts. I've never been to the village before. And Dara says, I don't know what Granny and the elders want, but I have to follow the customs passed down the, the Tadera family. That's an interesting bit, because generally, generally, not knowing what the mysterious elders want and just going along with it anyway is rarely a good sign in these kinds of stories. And again, there's just some super shady shit going on with, with, with Yama and all them. Uh, anyway, Dara then tells him, oh, my real name is Sadara Ryu, but just call me Dara. Um, which again, you know, the fact that he has a, a full, like, first and last name... Is he, a, like, what is he? Is he? He sort of, didn't he say he was a Sioux guy at one point? But now he seems to be a real person, and Hana said that she's inherited this fam this job for generations. It's a weird thing. I don't quite know what their deal is right now. Anyway. Uh, Yuru then comments, Granny, Granny doesn't want me to be taken by those people, and Dara-san's been told this repeatedly. And he then sort of questions Dara, what are we, my sister and I? And Hana sort of eyes Dara through the rearview mirror. Uh, as a reminder, last month, uh, Hana was like sort of shocked at how little Dara had told Yuru at this point. Um, but anyway, Dara seems to like 
resort, like sort of repeat this prophecy to, to Yuru. On a day when day and night are equal, a pair of twins, a girl and a boy, born in a village in the West, their birth will fracture the world. Oh, this is actually right telling him. As far as we know, the last occurrence was 400 years ago. A pair of twins divided by day and night was indeed born in the village. Was this left and right? Because mm. we know it's been like 400 years. Like if, if, if Dara is simultaneously human and Sugai, then maybe humans can become Sugai and maybe left and right were humans and then became Sugai. I don't know. Again, we know so little about how this world works. I'm basically just like, you know, shooting blind here. Anyway, um, um, Wright goes on. Then there was war between the country's eastern and western regions. And even longer ago, there was a time of war between north and south. Both involved Sugai users. I'm curious if this is actually has, like, elements of, tr like, you know, supernatural explanations to actual, his actual Japanese history. I have no idea. Um, and then Yuru comments, oh. Then we're the cursed siblings who bring chaos? And Hana tells him, no. It's people who covet your power who start fighting. Uh, that you're sort of protest power. I don't have any. Or it actually might be um, one of the Sayu twins who says this. Uh, but then, who said the earlier line about people who covet your power who start fighting. Uh, but anyway, power, I don't have any. And Wright tells him, not yet. Uh, and left, left then says, you have the right to obtain power. Mm. God, my throat is killing me right now. Um, and then Dara chimes in, and Asa seems to have already gotten it. And Wright just comments, well, that must be Kai. No idea that's referring to. Kai, the ability to forcefully resolve anything. Even a powerful ward can be easily broken. And in contrast to that, Fu. The ability to forcefully seal anything. Okay, so that explains how, how Asa broke the ward so easily. Um, around around uh, Higashimura. That she used that Kai power. And I'm guessing Yuru has this Fu ability. Um, but Hana then asks, what if Kai and Fu oppose each other? And Dara just comments, that's a paradox, which, you know, given that if I'm right and, and Yuru does gain this Fu power and Yuru and Asa are in contrast to each, are fighting each other, then that paradox will have to get an answer one of these days. Mm. Anyway, uh, Dara asks left, has there been anyone in the past who obtained both, who obtained both people with these powers? Uh, and left tells him, not to our knowledge. Then no one knows what will happen. Uh, and then um, someone then says, what will happen? Isn't that, isn't that just people blowing things out of proportion? I'm not quite sure who it makes the most sense to be saying that, though. Like, I can't work out any character in this car who would just sort of casually brush aside this whole backstory here. Mm. Anyway, Yuru goes on, isn't there a ward around the village? How does Dara-san pass through it? And Dara tells him, there's a path that bypasses it. Go counterclockwise around the field of rocks many times, turn right at this crossroad, then return after, after getting to the next one and leave the valley. Turn a straight angle at the next tree, convoluted things like that. I'm from a family that knows the path, which is why we can pass freely through the ward. Yuru's mother is in the lower lands, who happened upon the path by chance and reached the village. Okay, that's new information. Um, that Yuru's mother is from outside the village, which might explain why she just sort of ditched. If like the whatever whatever beliefs are governing that village was just like too much for her or something. Mm. It happens sometimes. People get lost and then accidentally get in. And we see who I'm assuming is Yuru's mother. This sort of traveler, you know, we see she's like sweaty, s sweating, dirty, breathing heavy. She almost has a kind of winery vibe. 
Um, at, at first glance, I did sort of think she was sort of win ah, Winry looking. Uh, but anyway. Um, and then Yuru has this flashback. Yuru. You are named after the word Yuru, which means night in my native tongue. I wish I could take your father, you, and Asa to my homeland. And I'm curious what language um, means night. Um, let me see if I can just a quick little Google thing. Um, I, I'm skeptical I can do it, but... Um, yeah, I got nothing. I got nothing. Um, anyway. But yeah, she's... We're, we're seeing this flashback of Yuru acknowledging that his mother is somewhat foreign to, to Higashimura. And we finally have our cover there. Chapter 4, Love and Truth. And then we got to these kids playing soccer in a field. Um, oh, and Yuru's like learning how bathrooms work in the modern world. Flush after you're done. Wash your hands. He's walking over to like uh, the fucking, the, like, the little up and down, uh, blow dryer that you see in, like, movie theaters, and he just sort of refuses, I don't like the one that sounds like a dragon, uh, and he just, like, brushes up, brushes the, the water off his, on, onto his shirt. If no one's using the room, please turn off the lights. Great. I remember the washroom rules of the lower lands now. He's so, like, confident in this, like, basic bathroom etiquette. I also love the, like, hoodie he's in here. Um, mm. Well, he acts confident for a second, and he quickly breaks down. But isn't it amazing that there's no need to draw water from the well? And what's that thing that lights up when you press a button? Uh, that's actually Wright's line. Uh, and then Left chimes in. The lights that shine in the cities at night. The grand castles made of stone. They all surprise me. How many people are here in the lower lands? Uh, and then Yuru cuts in. They're not castles, but housing. Darasan said many people live in them. Uh, and, and, you know, I think Lesbos, Lesbos sort of assuming that, like, an apartment complex is all, like, one lord's castle. Which, of course, is not the case. So Lesbos comments, the capital is really crowded. Uh, but Yuru corrects her. No, this, this isn't that. No, this isn't the capital. The capital is Tokyo, which has a population of over 10 million people. And left or right snaps, 10 million? How much stone do they need? There's so many people, I and mean, isn't the capital? Uh, and your just sort of comments, um, this place is called, Hanachan told me, Guntama Prefecture? On um, left sort of nods, Guntama Prefecture. I, I remember now. Is Guntama Prefecture an actual place? Um, Gunma Prefecture is a place, uh, which maybe is what it, this is supposed to be. Uh, and it's sort of like in the center of, of Japan, um, looking at Google here, um, which I'm guessing is what this is supposed to, what they're supposed to be getting at. Um, and they're just, there's like wrong, I think is the joke. Anyway, right comments, it's true that it's easy to hide among so many people. Uh, and Yuru, Yuru chimes in, like how you can hide a tree in a forest. And then left comments a bit more somberly. And you want to look for your sister among so many people. And Yuru just sort of, sort of, there's an interesting little, like, shading here. Like, the background cuts to black. You know, the previous panel, the background cuts to white, which is pretty common in manga like this. Um, you know, just like a, a white background is not really a big deal. But this all black background seems, like, there's a, there's a certain darkness to Yuru's comment. Yes, he's looking for his sister here. Um, mm. And he goes on, Darasan and Hanasan are good people. But they're, in the le but they're in league with the village who lied to me about who my sister was. I can't trust them wholly. Okay, so he's getting right at it. He is not, like, I thought we were going to, like, you know, Yuri was going to, like, fall all in with the Tadera family and sort of the elders of the village. And we'd slowly, like, peel back layers revealing they're not as good as they're made out to be. Uh, but no, no, you're getting cutting straight to the point. Something is up here. You know, Dara and Hana may be good, but they also lied to me. And that's suspicious. And I can't really trust them yet. So, like, good on him. That's the good shit there. 
Um, anyway, Yura goes on. Even so, I can't trust the person who said she was Asa all of a sudden. And I also love this kind of like inverse picture of Asa. Uh, like the, the white silhouette with the, with the eye patch is so cool, cool looking. Uh, and then left, left his comments and your parents. Yeah. It must have been difficult to escape the village with a child. I want to talk to them. And then we have this very, like, very telling image of uh, a family with two babies. Uh, definitely ties into to Yuru's own family situation there. Um, and then Yuru says, which means I must capture that Asa and make her bring me to our parents. Will you help me, Sayusama? Uh, and they just sigh, le left sighs, searching for someone in the totally foreign lower lands. And Wright is all ready to go. Sounds fun! Finally! Something to do in 400 years! Look forward to it! Uh, and Left tells him, The master's being serious. Stop making fun, you on the right. Uh, so yeah, I did kind of comment last month how sort of sudden, um, you know, Yuru would never really mention his parents until Sayu told him that story. And he was all of a sudden like, Oh, that's my, my main goal here. Which I found kind of interesting. But anyway, moving on. Uh, right then says, And what do you think? You on the left. And left just stares at him. And we have this real creepy look from her. I'm more suited to hunting than being hunted. Uh, and I just like... I, I, like right and Yuru were sort of like crammed to the corner there. As Yuru's just sort of like, What the fuck is she... And Wright just has this whole, like, shit-eating grin going on. Um, but anyway, they walk back in on, on Dara on the phone. Yeah. Yeah, right. Thanks. And he closes the phone. It's like a, like a, a late aughts flip phone. Uh, and he comments, oh, you're back. I'm back. And he points to the phone. What is that thing you keep using? This? Um, it's a phone, but you won't understand. And you like going back to like the the horse gag from last month, a smoke signal that can send words and voices, not really, something like that. And Yuru just Yuru left and right all completely understand. I love this shared gag of like I I, I love the the someone tries to explain modern tech to Yuru left and right, and they make some like out of left field comparison that all all three of them completely understand. I hope. I hope this is this is YNT's answer to FMA's short gags. It's quality shit here. I love it. So anyway, they all three in unison, I see. It's something like a smoke signal. <laughs> and, and Dara just thinks they're really simpletons. Uh, and Dara, Dara then tells them, Hanachan just contacted us. You've got him a place to live. We can move in right away. Goodbye to crowded living in a car. How long have they been in the car? A. That's my first thing. How long has it been? Because they only... I don't know if the impression has been more than like two or three days. Uh, and B. How easy is it to get an apartment in this town? Like, when I was getting this apartment, it took like a month or so to get everything squared away. Uh, and I couldn't I could even find an, a, an apartment that would be like open for like three months from when I was looking. How the fuck do you get that in two or three days? What the fuck? Mmm. Anyway, Yuru and, and Wright enter into the apartment, stunned. Wow! Uh, and Hana tells them, please come in. And Yuru just sort of comments that this exists inside a stone castle. Uh, and Hana tells Dara, you can use electricity and water already. We'll open the gas lines in a bit. And left and right go straight for the bathroom. Left is just, like, chilling in the bath. Like, what the fuck is this? I love... They're just, like... You know, left and right especially kind of have this sort of, you know, powerful deity vibe. But I love seeing them... The same thing with the with the simpleton gag earlier. Just being so totally wowed by the modern world. It's good content there. Anyway, Han is still going on. Darasan, please do the room on that side. And then she opens this, like, tatami room for, for Yuru... Yuru-kun, you probably prefer the, the tatami room here. Tatami? In the village, tatamis are... Uh, mm, I think there's a T missing there. It just says tatamis. In the village, tatamis are only used by Asa in special times. And then he like sort of feels around. Huh? The tatami in the lower lands are this thick? Uh, and Dara tells him, those were mats in the village. 
such luxury. Is it really okay to sleep here? And yeah, you know, Yuri was just over the moon for this modern, modern luxury. It sort of ties in Asa's comment back in chapter one about being like taller because she has better nutrition in the lower lands. Uh, but then this dog and cat appear above Yuru as he's like lying on the floor and they just like stare at him and they both like swat in his eyes. What the fuck? Uh, and, and Yuru like jumps up. Gah! And Hana tells him, oh, sorry, sorry. I'll introduce you. And she like holds her... Holds one arm around the cat. And, like, the cat is just staring at Yuru with, like, murder in his eyes. Kodetsu, and the dog, and Jiro. And Jiro is just, like, so, so, like, goofy. Just sort of chilling. He's vibing. That's a good old Shiba Inu right there. That cat is out for blood, and I love him. This is already... I've known Kodetsu for uh, five panels, but I would kill for him. I would let Kodetsu murder me. That's my hot take. Jiro's also a baby, and I love him. Um, and left and right walk in to the room. Oh, we're coming in. Uh, and they both sort of kneel before the animals. Where the sugai of this kid will be in your care. This is right. We're called Sayu-sama. I'm right. And both of them hold out a finger towards the respective animals. And I'm left. We'll be in your care. I have a translator note. Sayu-sama is written as that char those characters there. Um, the first two literally mean left and right, respectively. Uh, while the other, sama, is an honorific. We all know what sama means at this point. They are collectively known as Sayu-sama, but individually they are known as left and right. Okay. So as a group, like I feel like that means that as a pair, they can be discussed as an individual, if that makes sense. Uh, but they're also individuals apart from that. Uh, and then Dara comments, Hanachan Sugai, nice to meet you. Okay, so, so, Kodetsu and Jiro are Sugai. But if we go back to chapter three for a second, give me this, uh, page three, I am Hana, Dara Senpai's servant Sugai. Like, what does that mean? Hana's implying she's a Sugai there, but she also has Sugai? Can Sugai have Sugai? That's the question, I don't know. One of those, I hope one of these days Arakawa tells us what the fuck is going on with this world. Um, but anyway, moving on. Uh, and Yuru just snaps, they are Sugai? This cat and dog? And both Kodetsu and Jiro, like, Kodetsu, like, swaps at, oh, it's, he swipes at, um, <laughs> Yuru's finger, drawing blood. And Jiro just, like, whacks him in the stomach. Uh, they are Sugai? This cat and dog? And Wright sort of tells him, they're not normal animals. You make sure to greet them respectfully. Uh, and Hana tells him, my Sugai are four tiger rear wolf. They're glad to meet you. And yeah, to be fair, I almost commented, Kodetsu does look kind of tiger-like there. That's, that's fair to comment. Um, mm. If Darasan's name, name's been revealed, we'll use my name. And we see that uh, they're like the, the Dono household is Hana's last name. So again, I guess I, I don't know what was going on with that servant Sugai line last chapter. Either there was a mistranslation going on there, or our cub was already like retconning things. It's a little it's a little early to start retconning. But anyway, this video is getting longer only halfway through, so I should probably stop rambling and just focus more on the on the actual chapter. Um Anyway, uh Yuru sort of like looks at it and comments, Dono. And Hana tells him, give this as your family name too, Yuru. And, and Yuru's sort of stunned. Both Darasan and Hana have family names. Are you both from prominent families? Oh, is that a thing? That like in the, maybe like in, in older Japan, family names were like for the wealthy? I don't know. Again, I don't know much about Japanese history or anything. Um, might just be a particular quirk of Higashimura. Uh, but Hana snaps, it's normal to have a family name in the Lower Lands. Uh, but then, but then Dara tells Yuru, you know, Hana-chan owns a mountain. A landowner? And Hana snaps, I simply inherited it from my family. No one's bothered to develop it, so it's a total wilderness. No, no one will buy it anyway. Uh, and Yuru asks, how do you go hunting? Don't talk as if you're just going gathering. In the Lower Lands, you need a license. Uh, and of course, this is all news to, to Yuru. License? A permit. 
You need a license to drive the metal carriage, too. Bob or some lower lands. <laughs> He's so used to, like, not having any of this shit to deal with. Um, and then we cut to... We change scenes to an apple sitting on a plate on top of a rock. And we see... Um, Asa in, like, a, a tank top or something. And she flicks her finger out. And she carves off a tiny piece of the apple peel. And it just sort of rattles. Uh, doesn't fall over. Um, and then Asa looks at herself and holds out her hand. And, like, the stone behind the apple blows up or something. Uh, and Asa sort of feels that, hmm, it's different from what I expected. And then I guess this is, like, the head of the Kagemori or something. Oh, she's training. And we see him, he's in, like, a bit, kind of a traditional Japanese robe. He has these, like, henchmen behind him that are all in suits. We see Jean is one of them. Uh, but he seems awful friendly, which, again, sets up this idea that maybe we're on the wrong side here. Or maybe Arakawa was playing me like a fiddle. I don't know. Mm. Anyway, the old manager sort of like waves, hi, and also calls master. And we see she like kneels in front of him. I'm sorry. My accuracy is pretty lacking. I destroyed your garden again. Okay, so she wasn't like trying to hit the thing, I think. I think she was trying to hit the apple. Um, but the master tells her, it's fine. As long as no one dies, practice as much as you want. Like, he just seems awful nice, given, you know, we're supposed to believe he's this big bad. And he calls Gene, clean this up. Yes, sir. You know, he, he's making Gene do some, like, like manual labor, but it's hardly, hardly awful of him. Uh, and then he comments, Ai-chan. Uh, and we see Ai is written with a particular character, which means love, as referred to in the title of the chapter. Uh, love and Truth is our, is our title. So maybe, like, everything else has been a character. I, I hadn't quite commented on Love and Truth not being characters like every other title chapter had been. But maybe it is still a character. You know, maybe, maybe there's a character who shares a name with Truth or something. I don't know. Either way, uh, the badass anglerfish from last chapter just scoops up and eats all the garbage. So it's hardly even manual labor. Again, this Kagemori master just seemed like such a nice guy. I don't know. Um, and Asa asks, why are you all here? Well, we're here to visit Gab-chan. And we see he's even, like, brought Gab lunch from where she's, from, you know, while she's recuperating. And Gab is just chilling out on her switch. <laughs> oh, you shouldn't have gone out of your way. But we see she, her, her, like, legs are still bandaged. She's still sort of fucked up. Uh, and the master asked her, how are you feeling? Thank you for asking. I'm feeling great. Uh, and we see her, her sugai is named Gabriel. And Gabriel, and Gabriel's like snaps that, like, you know, chomps his teeth for a little bit. I see, I see. Uh, and also walks in with the apple from earlier. Gabchan, want some apple? Yeah. Uh, and also looks at, at the, the apple and comments, oh, I forgot to bring something to cut it. And Jean asks, a knife? Makoto-kun. And he summons... This little mini sugai, little mini fish, Makoto was written with a character that means truth, as referred to in the title of the chapter. So yes, love and truth are referring to Jean's sugai. Um, and Makoto just produces a knife. And Jean hands it to Asa. Here, thank you. And, and Gab just snaps, I'm not eating an apple sliced by a knife that came from God knows where. <laughs> it's just, I just love the Kagemoris. They're just so fun. I just, I, I, I love them. I don't know why, but they're just such fun characters. Um, mm. And Jean comments, don't worry. I don't think this knife has been used to stab people. Jean chan and you see they cut the apple, but the apple still does, like, have the mark from, um... Or I think it's meant to be the mark from, from... Asa's Kai power, if I'm not mistaken. Um... But anyway, Gabchan, focus on getting well. Yes, sir. Um, the master tells Asa to stay in this house as well, Asa. Um... And Asa's a little, little put off by that. But anyway, the master goes on. Since you and your brother are both, are both in the lower lands, word will spread. You'll be targeted. Even people within the Kagemori family may target you. 
okay, so there's some division within the Kagemoris. You know, the Kagemori has sort of been us as allies, but maybe not entirely, as even, like, the master of the Kagemori seems to imply. Uh, anyway, he goes on, If you stay in the, in the house, you'll be safe. Jean will be in charge of searching for Yuru. Understand? Uh, and Asa nods, understood. Uh, and Jean just sort of comments, but I don't know what your brother looks like. And Gabriel, like, hits herself, Oh, I should have taken a picture. And they all, like... Variously try to draw it to draw to draw Yuru. Um, Asa does a decent enough job, but she draws him like very kind of bishy. Like she's trying to like you know hype him up a little bit. Um, and Jean's just subjective, and Gab draws him as this like horrible like barely having a face monster. Jean comments artistic. And Gabriel paints him this like traditional Japanese painting style. And Jean's just artistic, and he sort of brushes all that off. I'll start looking into the link to the to the Tadera family. Thank you. And as Jean leaves, Asa chases after him. Jean's son, and Jean turns back. My brother Sugai have an amazing sense of smell. They can tell people apart just by the scent of their blood. And we see Gabriel has brought over a picture of left and right. Also in that traditional, excuse me, in that traditional art style, which honestly maybe, maybe makes a little bit of sense given that like Sugai are kind of ancient. It might make sense to use a more, a more, you know, older uh, art style, I guess. Anyway, uh, after that, Jean looks at the, the painting and then we cut to Dara, who is, has just shaved. Yeah, I feel great. Uh, and Hana comments, oh, Dara-san, your beard. Uh, and Dara tells her, I have seen, so I shaved. I have to try to conceal my, my identity. And, and Hana just snaps, your only Statham-like aspect is gone. No will do. As a reminder, she announced that she was like, you know, full on standing for Jason Statham last month. Uh, but Dara just comments, we just got married. I'm already morally harassed by my wife. Uh, and then... These are, they just gonna move on. Uh, and and Dara asks, where's our son gone? Uh, and Hana tells him, Yuruku's gone out on the walk. To, to, familiar, yeah, to familiarize himself with the area. And Dara questions, will he be all right? Sayu-sama are with him. He should be fine. Uh, and Dara's sort of looking around in this box. because you know, The box takes up to the, to the village. Uh, Hana-chan, where's my hatchet? And Hana tells him, I didn't take it. I'm sure I put it at the entrance. Oh, uh, Yuru's gonna go chop some wood, isn't he? He's gonna go chop down, chop down some trees. He's gonna get arrested. Just you wait. Uh, and Dara comments, "A walk? How far is he going?" Uh, and at th that exact moment, Hana realizes exactly what's going on. It's a violation of the guns and knives control laws. We'll get into trouble. What the hell is that kid doing? Uh, but we see sometime that night. Uh, Yuru, left and right, are just sort of, like, chilling on a rooftop. I don't think they're even, like, up to anything. Maybe Yuru just sort of, like, protection or something. Um. Mm. And they look down at the city. The lower lands are amazing. There are a million stars upon the ground. It's vast. And he has this moment of, of doubt at that. As right needles exactly to the point. Uh, the lower lands are more expansive than you thought. Are you doubting whether you can find your sister? And left just chimes in. They'll be searching for you too. We'll meet each other. And right laughs. Sounds great. Mutual affection. I mean, I don't think that's what it's really meant to be here, but okay. Uh, and then Yuru asks left. Does Sayusama recognize the presence of other Sugais? Like the time of those Shirasama. Derasan, there were many of... There are many Sugai users... Yeah. Derasan said that there are many Sugai users in the Kagemori family. And left kind of nods, yeah. You know what the blood of Asa smells like, right? And right comments, yeah. A place with a lot of sugai. And the scent of blood like mine. There. Oh, so he's like, we're going to like narrow it down instantly. You know, we'll find them. We know, we basically know how to find them. Find where a bunch of sugai are and one of them will have blood that smells like Yuru's. And left and right comment, I think it'll work. Yeah. And right yells, let's hone our senses. And they, like, transform into lightning bolts and go flying up into the sky. Uh, but they've also grabbed Yuru 
and with like lightning hands and are flying off uh, as your just screams past like the this tower, past the cell phone lines, or the phone lines, I mean, not cell phone lines particularly. Uh, this like high rise. Uh, he's just like at a certain point, he's just rendered speechless. As Wright suddenly realizes, oh, and they find this like warehouse down below. Uh, and left, I noticed left really loves being in a high place. You know, she was the one sitting on the car the whole time. Uh, she's on the rooftop here where Wright and Yuru on the ground below. But R Yuru, meanwhile, is just like panicky here. Like, what the fuck just happened to him? Um, anyway, this is probably, they probably made a mistake. Uh, going after Asa this soon, given how, like, little experience Yuru has in any of this. But anyway, Wright picks uh, Yuru up, a scent of blood like yours, and quite a few sugai. Uh, and Yuru, still, like, drooling from what from the experience, experience he just had. Sugai? Nearby? Uh, but Left tells him, if they appear, I'll beat them, I'll beat them to a pulp, okay? Uh, but Yuru snaps... What if it's a sugai like Oshira-sama who can communicate with us? But Left tells him, don't view the sugai in human terms. We live in different worlds. We cannot understand each other. But they clearly can because they talk with Oshira and with Left and Right. I don't, maybe like there are humans, humanoid sugai and non-humanoid sugai? Like, we don't really see Gabriel talking. I mean, eyes like, you know woman anglerfish light could talk, but that was largely part of the anglerfish act. Uh, beyond that, we haven't seen I or Makoto talking. Maybe it's pretty rare for, for Sugai to talk. Like, um, what were their names? The, the, the cat and dog from earlier. Uh, I'm blanking. Uh, Kodetsu and Jiro. They couldn't really talk, but they were able to have some kind of communication with, with left and right. Um, I don't know. Anyway, you're going to take that at, at face value. I see. Now think of them like bears and boars. And the narrator reminds us that you're kind of a simpleton. Uh, and then Wright comments, oh, and he starts sniffing. And they peer around and we see uh, it's Gene and like a couple of other Kagemori guys uh, in a parking garage is where the gang is now. And Gene's on the phone to Dara's, yes. They might have escaped to somewhere far away already, but if there's news, contact me immediately. Uh, and Wright comments from like behind the wall. Oh, the sense of Asa and Sugai is coming from them. If we've noticed them, their Sugai must have noticed us as well. Can you see? And Yuru comments, no, not yet. Those people in black suits, are they human? Uh, and Wright comments, they're human. But someone approaches, uh, I think that might be Asa. To be quite frank. Uh, getting both left and right's attention. And yes, it is Asa approaching Jean. The two of them have some kind of conversation as Yuru and Sayu watch on. Uh, and Yuru suddenly remembers everything. It has this flashback to what happened at the village. All of the corpses at, after seeing Asa. And he jumps out, right, brandying the hatchet. Ah! Uh, but right calls out, Yuru, Wait! The scent of blood is old. That is... Oh, it's a... Okay. So, so I's little, little light can become any person. It's not just the one human. I guess it needs their blood, given what, uh, what Wright said. But yeah, it's a trap. And I is there with, with Yuru between its teeth. Um, and Yuru is just trapped. The, the, you know, I isn't biting down on him. It, she's just sort of got him trapped there like a cage. Uh, and Jean comments, I heard that your sugai have a good sense of smell. And he pulls out a vial of Asa's blood. But I guess he, he took it from her. And judging by your experience to this asa son, you're the older brother of the twins. Nice to meet you. I'm Kagemori Jean. This is my sugai, the scavenger. It's an honor to meet you in person, Yuru-san. A battle between Sugai users starts. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm digging this a lot. There's a lot of fun stuff here. Um, it's a lot of like what I've been saying for a while. Like I wish I knew more about the world at this point. Um, mm. 
Or that that kind of makes it sound like I'm. I feel like we should know more, but like. What I'm getting at is I'm still trying to, like, feel out how this world works. You know, I'm still sort of in that, you know, beginning phase. This is chapter four. There's a whole lot we don't understand yet. Um, but, you know, there's the continuing... I, I love getting to see... Um, Yuru start to realize that, like, the village can't really be trusted. Dara and Hana are nice enough, but, like, the fact they're allied with the village is not necessarily great because the village is not entirely trustworthy right now. Um, so that, that's some real good shit there. And I'm definitely expecting that to get fleshed out more, especially with just like how generally we see the Kagemori side, right? The, the Kagemori's are always kind of shown in the sort of genuinely like friendly light, you know, the, the boss of the Kagemori's is just sort of this friendly old man He's so, like, you know, he looks so nice when we see him in this, like, first close-up uh, headshot fair. And, you know, he he brings Gab some food. And Gab is just, like, chilling on her switch. Gab is the real fun character. Um, like, Jean is, like, the least outwardly nice of this trio. Um, but even, even he's not, like, actively mean. He has a job to do and he'll do it. And, I mean... You know, the, the one the one counterpoint to the whole um, the Kagemori's are the good guys theory is like sort of slightly I'm not you know, I'm not saying there are inherent good and bad guys, it might be a bit more complicated story than that. But like the one caveat is that Gab didn't murder a bunch of villagers, and maybe they were all guilty of something and we don't know, and you know, she actively spared the children. My point being, uh, I don't know, that felt kind of like a tangent, to be quite frank. But my point being, the Kagemori's just seem nice. You know, Jean has sort of got, you know, he's got Yuru in, like, a cage of teeth at this point, but he's not, like, terrible. You know, he's not having I kill, uh, kill Yuru. He just need to bring him in for something. It's very unclear what that something is, but it's clearly something. Um, but yeah, that sort of brings us to uh, Yuru side of the story, and there's just so much fun little comedy going on throughout the that part. You know, I, I'm really a big fan of Yuru just, like, not understanding, uh, like, needing these, like, you know, super simplified metaphors to understand anything of them, anything about the modern world. Uh, some good shit there. Uh, Yuru's just, like, utter awe at how, like, fancy uh, the, this, like, poor apartment is. Kodetsu and Jiro are adorable, and I love them. Um, and then, yeah, we have the scene of him just, like, he's very sort of a lot more, um, like, just very proactive. I was not really expecting him to, like, start a confrontation this fast. But here we are. He's already just sort of arrived. Um, and we're picking a fight with Gene already. I thought Gene would end up being a much, like longer lasting villain or okay i shouldn't say villain uh longer antagonistic force i guess for lack of a better term though again this could just be like a short little confrontation that gets broken up somehow i don't know either way next time some kind of fight between gene and yuru is bound to begin and we'll see all, how all that plays out in a month but for now i'm talking for almost 45 minutes and i'm kind of tired and i've said all i have to say about this video about this chapter so i'm gonna leave this video off here Hope you'll enjoy the chapter and the video itself. If you did, feel free to drop me a like or subscribe or, you know, do whatever makes you happy, you know? And as always, your life is your own, okay? Bye!